welcome you back to the Debrinic Channel. Today we are talking about Lake Mead and Lake Powell. This will be strictly about Lake Mead and Lake Powell. Histories, futures, and we have a special guest today. Meet Amy, our new AI correspondent. She's here to explain sediment, and occasionally she glitches into a dial modem. Be nice, she's learning. Now let's get right into it. How you doing today, Amy? Hey Chip, so Lake Mead. Hoover Dam's giant bathtub, right? I heard it's filling up with dirt. Like 1.5 million tons of sediment every year? That's wild. How does that even happen? You're right, Amy. The Colorado carries sand and silt and clay from erosion upstream. When the river hits Lake Mead, the water slows way down and all that gunk sinks. Over 88 years, sediment filled 6.8 of the lake's original capacity, enough water loss to supply Las Vegas for 15 years. Wait, so the mud's stealing Vegas' water? That's worse than my cousin borrowing my car and never refilling the gas. How long until the lake's a desert again? That's a great question. 1935, engineers predicted sediment would choke mead in about a thousand years. But today, faster erosion, water withdrawals sped things up. A 2022 University of Arizona study says sediment could claim 20% of Mead's capacity by 2050. I'll bet my Netflix password it'll be a mud puddle by 2045. They'll rename it Lake Dirt and sell souvenir jars of sludge. <laughs> Let's stick to the data, Amy. But here's the kicker. Sediment isn't just shrinking the lake. It's causing hydraulic roughness. That's engineer speak for the mud creating friction, slowing water flow, and making the river less efficient at refilling the lake. Whoa, so the dirt's literally fighting the water? That's like a WWE Smackdown, mud versus Mojave. But hey, at least the sludge preserved that World War II bomber they found underwater. Precisely. In 2001, divers discovered a B-29 plane perfectly preserved under 250 feet of sediment. Archaeologists say that the mud is a time capsule. It buried ancient Native American tools, old mining equipment, and even 1930s railroad that they used to build the dam and a city for that matter as well oh so the mud's like a grumpy librarian hoarding history but why don't they just vacuum it out they already tried that in the 1990s the bureau of reclamation undertook a significant effort to manage the sediment accumulation in lake mead by spending 50 million dollars on dredging operations despite these efforts the challenge of controlling sediment is like trying to shovel snow in the middle of a blizzard the sediment just keeps piling up making permanent removal nearly impossible this sediment primarily comes from the Colorado River, which carves through the Grand Canyon, constantly eroding and carrying vast amounts of dirt and debris downstream. Over time, this material naturally flows into Lake Mead, where it settles and builds up as sludge at the bottom of the reservoir. Today, addressing the full extent of the sediment buildup in Lake Mead would be an enormous task. Experts estimate that it would require removal of approximately 30 million dump trucks worth of sludge to restore the lake to its original capacity. This figure highlights the sheer volume of the problem, dwarfing familiar quantities like the number of fries McDonald's serves globally. The ongoing sediment influx and monumental challenge of removing highlights the persistent and overwhelming nature of this environmental issue, directly tied to the geological activities of the Grand Canyon. Yikes. So we're stuck with a dusty bathtub. What's next? Sandcastles on the Strip over in Vegas. Not quite. Engineers built a Hoover Dam with sediment tunnels to flush the gunk. Problem is, low water levels mean those tunnels are bone dry. The sediment is now piling up faster than anyone predicted. Wait, so the dam's own plumbing is broken? That's like buying a sports car with no gas tank. Pretty much. But here's the silver lining. The sediment preserves ecosystems too. Scientists found endangered pupfish thriving in isolated mud pools. It turns out the sludge is their Airbnb. Gross but cool. Hey Chip, Lake Powell's the Grand Canyon Pool Party Reservoir, right? But I heard it's slurping up 55 million tons of sediment yearly. That's like swallowing Arizona's entire beach. Spot on, Amy. The Colorado dumps enough sediment into Powell annually to bury Central Park under 30 feet of dirt. Since 1963, it filled 1.2 billion tons. That is equivalent to 2.4 million Olympic swimming pools full of sludge. Wait, so why isn't Powell as muddy as Mead? It's way younger. Good point, Amy. Powell's deep, narrow canyons let sediment settle in remote areas. But here's the catch. If water levels drop too low, that mud could migrate towards Glen Canyon Dam intakes. A 2023 Bureau of Reclamation report called it a sediment threshold. Once passed, cleaned up becomes impossible without draining the lake. Kind of scary. Yikes. So Powell's a dirt time bomb? Should we start a GoFundMe for a giant vacuum cleaner? <laughs> No, not exactly. Engineers designed Lincoln Canyon Dam 
With sediment in mind, they included bypass tunnels, but today's low water levels mean those tunnels are useless. Sediments now piling up faster than predicted, risking the dam's power generation. Oh, so the mud's hijacking our electricity. That's like a villain stealing all the Wi-Fi. But hey, isn't some sediment good? Like for ecosystems? For sure. Before there was a dam at Glen Canyon Dam, the Colorado River carried nutrient-rich silt to the Grand Canyon, feeding plants and beaches. Now that that sediment's trapped in pal starves downstream areas, biologists have stated that it's wrecking habitat for fish like the endangered humpback chub. So the mud's a bully and a thief? Nature's drama never ends. But wait, can't we just let the river flow freely again? Like tear down the dams? Some activists want that. There's a lot of calls for that, and actually some activists want that. But Lake Powell and Lake Mead provide water for 40 million people and 5 million acres of farmland. Training them would be like unplugging the Southwest life support. Whoa, so we're stuck between a rock and a muddy place? Exactly. So the real fix, reduce water usage. Agriculture sucks up 80% of the Colorado River flow. So if they started switching to drought-resistant crops, that could save enough water to refill both lakes in 200 years. The real solution to the challenges facing Lake Mead and Lake Powell lies in reducing water usage. Did you know that agriculture consumes about 80% of the Colorado River flow? By transitioning to drought-resistant crops, significant water savings could be achieved. However, even with such measures, the vast scale of the water deficit and the slow pace of the natural replenishment that fully refilling both lakes could take centuries. But to put it into perspective, even with optimal water conservation and management strategies, it might still take 200 or more years for the lakes to fully recover under current conditions. This highlights the need for long-term, sustainable water management plans that address both immediate needs and future challenges. 200 years? I'll be retired on Mars by then. Maybe. Let's just pray for rain and invest in dirt futures. Hey Chip, so I was reading this super old document about the Colorado River. And get this, back in 1922, they thought the river had like 16.5 million acre feet of water every year. They split it up between states and everything. But guess what? They measured the river during like a rain dance festival or something because it was way wetter than normal. You're so right, Amy. The 1922 Colorado River Compact allocated 16.5 million acre feet annually based on the river flow data from the wettest 20-year period in 500 years. But long-term averages show that the river only delivers about 14.8 million acre-feet every year. Wait, so they promised everyone 16 million acre-feet, but the river only has 14.8 million on average? That's like ordering a pizza for eight people and only getting six slices. No wonder the lakes are shrinking. Even worse, since the year 2000, the river flows actually dropped to about 12.4 million acre-feet due to the drought going on. But states still take their full share, draining Mead and Powell even further. Not to mention the upper lakes, including Flaming Gorge, Lake Navajo, and Blue Mesa, amongst others. Oh my gosh. So they basically wrote checks the river couldn't cash, and now we're stuck with Lake Maybe and Lake Puddle? Classic human move. Yeah, pretty much. (laughs) We're draining these lakes faster than a kid chugging a Capri Sun. But here's the kicker. If we don't fix this, Lake Puddle, as you call it, might become Lake Parking Lot. Nobody wants to jet ski on asphalt. But wait, how'd they mess up that bad? Did they use a magic eight ball instead of math? Worse. They used politics. Back in 1922, lawmakers wanted to split the river to fuel growth in the southwest. They ignored the scientists' warnings that the wet period wouldn't last. And now we're stuck with a legal agreement that promises more water than the river holds. Thanks, 1922. Whoa, so they basically bet on a river that didn't exist. That's like building a casino on a Monopoly board. And now we're all losing. But hey, maybe we can fix it? Like tell Arizona to stop growing lettuce in the desert? Just a thought. You're not wrong. Amy, agriculture guzzles 80% of the Colorado River's water. But it's not just Arizona. Let's break it down. Alfalfa alone drinks 3 million acre feet yearly, even though it supplies 15 million households, most of it's grown in California's Imperial Valley and Arizona. But even Nevada and Arizona grows this thirsty crop in the desert. And I saw it firsthand with my own eyes, so I know this is a fact. California uses more Colorado River than any other state. 4.4 million acre feet annually. A third of that goes to alfalfa 
and hay, mostly to feed dairy cows. Arizona's agriculture uses 74% of its Colorado River allowment, including lettuce, like you said, corn, and hay. Fun fact, Saudi Arabia grew hay in Arizona to feed their cattle using our water. Now, the government has shut that down somewhat, and now they can't just use those wells like they were. Now, not all that was coming from the Colorado River water. It was coming from the aquifer underneath Arizona. Also, Colorado, Wyoming, and New Mexico grows water-heavy crops like barley and hay, too. Cutting back alfalfa could save about 1.5 million acre feet yearly, enough to refill Lake Mead by 5% in 10 years. But here's the kicker. We export 10% of U.S. hay to China and the Middle East. So yeah, Amy, maybe we should tell Arizona to stop growing lettuce and hay and cotton. Just a thought. Oh my gosh, Chip. Thanks for letting me nerd out about dirt lakes. If you ever need me again, I'll be, uh, checks notes studying Hoover Dam's secret tunnels or something. Bye, viewers. Stay hydrated, and don't let sediment steal your Wi-Fi. Bye. And I want to thank you guys for stopping by. I hope you enjoyed the new AI. It could be anybody. It could be a different person. It might be a guy. It might be a girl. If you guys like it, please let me know one way or another. I'm trying a new experiment to see if you guys like it. Something to keep me fresh, more or less. So I write the script, and then I have a voice generator read the script out loud, and I record it, and I put it up here. So if you guys like it, let me know. If not, no worries. The old way of doing things. Hope you like the new bar going across the screen right now. Showing all the lake levels. I've That's what's been taking so long. I've had this done for a week now, but I've been working on this bar graph. I hope you enjoy that, and we'll see you on the next one. God bless.